hey, I'm now live, this is fun. I'm gonna be going back and forth with my eyesight and talking and where I'm looking because I'm also recording this for YouTube because I know that I did it vertical the other day and then when I posted it to YouTube, people were like, oh, it's supposed to be horizontal. And I was like, oops, sorry about that. I just figured since I put on makeup today and I have something that I'm kind of pissed off about, I would rant to you guys again and thanks for all the feedback. So. I guess some of you liked it and shared it with friends and that's awesome and great. I already had makeup on today because I did a hit on OANN that's airing later tonight and then I did a podcast with Ian Hayworth and that comes out tomorrow. So I'll be sure to share it to all of the platforms. Um, I guess I'm a Karen. I've discovered this about myself, at least that's what lots of people have started calling me on Twitter, when I pointed out that people's children awfully are more likely to die in a car accident than they would of COVID and yet we have people consistently saying that schools should not reopen and um, I am a thousand percent wanting to protect our kids. Uh, I am a thousand percent also wanting some form of normalcy for our children. I think I'm saying that word wrong and I'm increasingly aware of how damaging this is to their educational growth, their emotional growth, their um, social interaction abilities, uh, and so on and so forth. Full disclosure, I was homeschooled all 12 years. I'm a massive fan of homeschooling. One of my dearest friends in the whole wide world, Bethany Mandel, uh, is homeschooling her four precious children. I've been talking to her a lot lately about this, of like, what are we going to do come the fall? I know people that are drop, pulling their kids out of public schools across the country and even private schools across the country and choosing to homeschool. I am pro homeschooling. I am pro um, parents making the decision that's best for their individual children. And uh, I'm also able to recognize that because I am a conservative that believes in the importance of the individual, I know that not every child is going to need the same level of education or is going to ex have the same positive educational experience like you can't, no one is a cookie cutter. You, we can't put kids in a box. And yet we're seeing that that's what a lot of state, federal, and even local officials are doing. They're just putting every single kid in this box. And I think it's a dangerous box to be putting kids in right now. And I think it's, um, to me, I know there've been people that are saying, oh yay, this is a opportunity for homeschoolers. Yeah, it is, but I gotta say, like growing up homeschooling, part of the reason why homeschooling was so awesome is that we had the freedom to go and do things. And this isn't uh, the best environment. Yes, I think homeschooling is still amazing and I'm considering doing it with our girls. My, husband's, I, my husband and I are talking about it. Not husbands, oh God, <laughs> that'd be awful. Um, not a polygamist. Um, my husband and I have been having conversations about what homeschooling would look like. And I think in a perfect world, in a normal world, Homeschooling is a heck of a lot easier and a better option for a lot of children, but it is met with different challenges, just like virtual learning is met with different challenges now than it was pre-COVID because you don't have the option to get out of the house. You have a lot of people that do need uh, school for partial childcare because they're single parents or double income families that live in large metropolitan areas like Los Angeles that have essentially just said, screw you. Like we're still taking your tax dollars, but we are not reopening and we don't have any plans to reopen. Like it is so open-ended and the government really isn't giving people um, guidelines. They're, they're constantly changing every single day. I've spoken to private school teachers here in Southern California. I've spoken to LAUSD uh, teachers and faculty and there are of course mixed feelings. There are some people that I understand if they're over the age of 60 and they're thinking, you know, I'm kind of nearing retirement, why would I put myself at risk to potentially get COVID and die from it? I think that maybe states should come up with early retirement option plans, why not? Um, but I think that with every job, with the truck drivers and the grocery store workers and the medical care workers and the frontline responders that everyone was praising at the beginning, teachers are kind of at the front lines now, right? This is a part of what they signed up for, even if they didn't recognize it or know it. And we all take risks when we make career decisions and professional decisions. Um, you know, my husband and I are self-employed. We've lost clients during COVID. That's a risk that we took when we decided to be self-employed, that there are gonna be high days and low days and good months and bad months. But we have the freedom to be home with our children and to travel the country to do speeches on college campuses, whoops, when they're open. Um, and I think that everybody needs to recognize that there is a potential risk. I do feel sorry for some of the teachers that maybe it's their passion and they don't want to quit or they don't want to early retire. 
but it's brought a bigger light on an issue that I've had for a very long time, and that's with public sector unions and teachers unions who claim to care about your children, but they use opportunities like COVID to try to destroy areas of education that are actually helping children and not just helping rich white kids, but helping kids who need it the most in underprivileged neighborhoods with those single parents and those moms that are working really hard to give them the best education they can possibly have. We saw that earlier this week with the LAUSD teachers union saying, oh yeah, we don't wanna reopen unless charter schools are off the table. Why? Why? Charter schools are immensely successful. I mean, there's charter schools in New York where the kids had previously had issues and graduation rates were abysmal, where now these kids are getting scholarships to amazing Ivy League schools. I just cannot comprehend how people who claim to be for the children and are now saying, no, we're going to stick kids in situations where they might not be able to do their best educationally. Once again, I'm a fan of homeschooling. I'm a fan of charter. I'm a fan of every option. But we're not giving parents the option right now for what is best for their kids. And we're also leaving behind a lot of kids where public school is their only option. Because unfortunately in this country, the zip code that you are born into and the zip code where your parents can afford to live is what determines your level of education. I've talked to LAUSD teachers who are a part of after school programs and saying, you know, Elisha, I'm so concerned about these kids. These kids that I want to be in person with, that I need to be in person with, or they're going to lag behind because they're already slow learners or slow readers because English is their second language. Or they don't have a quiet place to study at home because they're living in three and four multi-generational homes. I mean, these are teachers that truly care, that recognize that reopening our schools is actually the best option for a lot of people for the kids' development, not just socially, emotionally, and educationally, but so the parents can go back to work. I don't have all the answers. I don't claim to have all the answers. I think both sides have totally failed and are sucking at this right now. Um, but when I see like the Betsy DeVos hate or the hate for the American Pediatric Society or people calling me a Karen for saying, why can't we reopen our schools when thank God our children are not the most at risk, it really bothers me that people can't just look at the facts and can't just look at the stats here. And anyway, I just, it was glaringly apparent to me, we, we actually dropped off some library books at our daughter's school because they have abbreviated office hours and they'd send an email like that we were missing some library books. And I was like, oops, and uh, <laughs> had to bring them back to the school. And uh, I realized like our daughter and our niece like walked into the school and they got teary eyed. And they were just like, I miss this. I miss my friends. I miss my community. And they don't have their church community right now. They don't have like, all of their play dates with friends. They have consistently changing plans, like maybe Disneyland, which is a birthday tradition for them. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. A trip for their great gramps' 90th birthday um, gathering, canceled, off the table. Grandparents coming here, might be canceled, off the table. Um, just these things are really damaging to like their psyche and their understanding and their ability to kind of, my kids are super easy. And up until like now, when people were checking in and saying, how are your kids doing with COVID? I would have said amazing. Like they were doing amazing. It was homeschooling or, you know, virtual schooling was a breeze. It was so good. But now it's really starting to affect them. And I've got four under 11 in our house right now. Um, the baby is one today. She's the cutest. You know, she's probably not as affected at, uh, by it but my almost three-year-old totally is. We went to the store today after we went to the school to return the library book, and it's like she doesn't know how to act in public now. She doesn't, you can see her like kind of looking at people. She's not sure how to trust or interact with them. Um, I'm concerned because she's not around kids of her own peer group and her age. She's delayed in her potty training compared to her older sister, right? And I don't know if these are things that are just part of her personality, um, or maybe they are because of the circumstances that we're in. I have friends and family members with kids with special needs, and they need to see their therapist. They need to go to their occupational therapy. They need to be having interaction with other people and professionals. And to just have a blanket like, shut up, Karen. You don't know what you're talking about. We don't want teachers to get sick and die. I don't want teachers to get sick and die either. Um, but I'm also concerned about the generations like that are coming after us and how this is going to affect them. 
And I read something the other day, somebody was like, you know, our young children, somebody else responded, well, what about 18 and old, or 18 and under? I really think it's like 25 and under at this point because you have people that are newly out of college, that are new adults, um, that typically live in metropolitan areas that might be in that first job or that were laid off or furloughed. And I think that it is idiotic and very short-sighted in a dangerous way to eliminate people's concerns and eliminate the questions that should be answered by um, those in authority of what is the why behind this. And I think a lot of the why is fear and not fact-based. And that's my conspiratorial mom rant for the day. But comment, please let me know. I'm happy to engage. I wanna hear from more teachers, I really do. I wanna hear from um, school leaders and principals and teachers and educators, retired, current, whatever. I hear from a ton of homeschoolers. I know y'all's perspective already. Uh, and I'd like to dialogue with you. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.